So, did you ask me to, to make a short summary of, of the workshop? So, I'm going to start with uh, evaluations. Because I'm doing evaluations, but because if we are talking about errors, somehow we should evaluate our systems to start talking about the errors. So, uh, there were several talks that uh, highlighted the importance of evaluation and the difficulty of evaluation. Especially, uh, for example, the. Uh, I can put it on. If you want, that's like really the you know, how to you know. No, no, no. It doesn't work. No. <laughs> well, I was just talking. Uh, for example, the talk of uh, Lucia Spezia just showed the the uh, that we, in order to measure quality, we should actually know what what is quality exactly and quality for whom or what. So there is a whole bunch of questions around the, 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 the notion of quality that we want to evaluate. And so also it was shown that importance, there is different importance for users that know the language and they do not know the language when they do post editing. And uh, that's very difficult to achieve internet editing when you do the evaluation. There was also a presentation by J.F. Khan from LNE that showed that Data is very important, especially our evaluation is very complex, like repair, repair evaluation, that is the evaluation of uh, multimedia person tracking, and that we actually, in order to make coherent evaluation, we should be really attentive to choosing the data, and then looking at the data, we can, we can show a lot of things, and uh, so doing evaluation is not only score, but it's something bigger that should provide the clues for developers to improve their system. And so what we what what probably we are looking for is error analysis for quality improvement. Here I, we start talking about the errors, and when we start talking about the errors, we should start talking about the definition of errors and classification of errors. And this is the first point when we immediately face the number, the large number of questions, because <coughs> as uh, Sutira said from uh, LIMC showed in her presentation, the, even the notion of gravity of errors in, uh, in uh, systematic speech recognition is uh, quite difficult to define because the annotator agreement is very approximative, if we can say, and uh, each expert has its own interpretation of the task and the interannotated agreement is really far from being perfect. And uh, really humans have difficulties classifying error gravity. So basically what we need, we need really a task definition to go on with this point and probably it's too early to think of things in, in general when we talk about the, the, the error definition. Error gravity. Then uh, uh, if we talk about errors, we there, there were the, the next question is the sources of errors. For example, the presentation of Miriam Ernestus uh, about the errors induced by pronunciation errors. So show that Reduced speech has different consequences uh, on the errors, and also there were a bunch of other presentations uh, devoted to this to this topic, either from the general and psycholinguistic point of view, and more technical presentation linked to, to pruning errors and things like this. Then, if we talk about errors, we should talk about the localization of errors. So basically, detecting these errors, hoping that we really define these errors already and we classify them, so now we just we, we, we detect them. Uh, for example, in uh, uh, spoken dialect systems, in order to to introduce a clarification component between ASR system and machine translation system, and there is a number of open questions like: uh, Can we really automatically detect and correct simple errors? Can we can can we distinguish? The reaction of users towards errors and uh, the spoken dialogue system says, uh, sorry, I'll be short, it's like, how can we decide to stop trying to clarify? Uh, so there's a whole bunch of, of, of questions regarding this point of error detection and localization. And the next uh, point for me was visualization and tools. So error visualization and tools for, for doing this. We've seen the, the demo by Reverend and from MC for the repair project. And actually the, the point is that it's very important to, to visualize errors to to go on improving your systems because visualizing errors <coughs> provides us with the possibility to 
to see where a system makes mistakes, to see if the ideas that we introduce in, in systems they really help to improve uh, to improve the performance and uh, why you <coughs> in particular types of errors. So there were several talks devoted to uh, visualization tools and visualization of errors. So the next point, if we already imagine that we solved all the, the, the bunch of questions that I was talking about, this is it's actually using the errors. And using the errors, we can use the errors to improve the data, as Mark Liberman uh, was talking about, using the errors to, to improve the, the data that we can reuse later for, for training for, for training systems. Or to to use errors to learn things, as just Martin uh, were talking about this uh, Right, right before me. And then the next two uh, big points about using the errors is actually using the errors for quality estimation, to, to estimate quality of, of, of systems. Uh, there was a talk uh, devoted to this uh, for automatic speech recognition, for example, predicting, predicting recognition performance based on confusion networks, or uh, investigating if uh, what error rate really predicts performance of real systems so what was uh, Benoit was talking about? Uh, basically, what he was talking about is that we actually not, when we evaluate things, we should look at real task as a task posed to human, not just transcription in general, and then to investigate the, the influence of errors. Uh, the same for for machine translation, and then. So that was using errors for quality estimation, but we can always use errors for system improvement. And that we've seen a lot of talks devoted to this topic, especially uh, in machine, machine translation and automatic speech recognition. So I'm not going to talk a lot about this because I can remember it well. And uh, <coughs> the next question when we talk about errors is actually comparing human and automatic errors. So there is an open question do we really want to mimic uh, human behavior and human errors to trying to, to, to improve uh, automatic errors? And uh, there was a number of talks devoted to the problem of comparing these human and automatic errors, both from psycholinguistic point of view and uh, from more technological point of view, uh, really linked to, to real systems, as we have seen in the uh, and a presentation, for example, Bernoulli, or the presentation devoted to both aspects, like using a hum looking at human errors and uh, in machine translation, as in presentation by Francois and Tony uh, Kubler. So, uh, for me, there, the, 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 there's a bunch of questions in every point relative to definition, classification, localization, using errors, and then the, there is another point that is generalization of the efforts that we do. So, uh, so far, that I have my personal impression that we've seen a lot of talks devoted to specific topics and specific applications, but that were not many, uh, that there was not much discussion devoted to generalization of this effort and trying to, uh, to, to, uh, to project some achievements from one domain to another and making things <laughs> So that's that's my personal summary. Fine. Thank you.